the Ona sixth course. And this is probably Colombo's most favorite sushi. It's a salmon aburi sushi. So that piece is for the producer. Salmon is an oily fish, and sometimes the oiliness can be too strong, especially when it's farm salmon and not wild. Having only farm salmon in Sri Lanka, I once used a blowtorch to sear some salmon, and the oil got fused, it ignited, it crusted, it added depth, texture, and it lightens the heavy fat. The increase in temperature makes this more melt-in-your-mouth sushi than it was before. At Nihonbashi, I buy about 20 kilos of crabs a time. So that we do that about three times a week. Granted, it's not the one kilo crabs that I used on our chili crabs or what we saw in Singapore, but it's small ones, 500 grams. And I just cleaned one crab and it generated about 100 grams, 70 to 100 grams of meat generally, but it generated about 70 grams this time. Now, these are the two kinds of meat I want to show you. This is inside the crab, which is like very sweet. And this is the legs and the claws, which have a small, light, uh, thin membrane around it. And for me, I prefer this one because it's really, really sweet and much tastier and more stronger in crab flavors. Now, if you look very carefully, I did not try to shred the crab meat away. I took it very gently and you could actually get you know, big pieces uh, from the crab. I mean, these are, mind you, 500 gram crabs and we still have like big, big pieces. Now, I'm going to mix all this into my uh, baked crab dish. Let me grab a bowl. I'm going to use only the sweetest part of the crab meat from the body, the white part. And to this, I'm going to mix Japanese rice in there. So for 240 grams of crab meat, I have 120 grams of rice. This is the white sauce we made, which we have in the restaurant. And just keeping it at room temperature, it gets hard. And I'm going to saute some onions in olive oil. I'm using about 50 grams of chopped onion. I want it to slowly brown and get soft. And that's going to add to the sweetness of the crab meat. Onion is being getting golden color the last five minutes. I haven't used any salt or pepper, and I'm not going to. I'm actually going to use soy sauce. And into this olive oil and beautiful golden onions, put about two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm just going to pour this hot onion and olive oil and soy sauce onto the crab. And I'm going to mix it really gently. Uh, I don't want to shred the crab meat any further. Now I know when you have bay crab elsewhere, everything's filled onto the sides and rim. I'm not trying to make you full with a portion of bay crab. I want you to enjoy it. So there's, I'm not filling it up totally. And I think if you do it too much, it's overkill. You're eating too much of something so rich and creamy. So it's very little, but in this mixture, there's more than 30% of crab meat. And other places probably use 10% crab meat. This is a wonderful dish and try it at home. I mean, if you don't have crab shells, use a small casserole dish. And on top of this, I'm just going to sprinkle fluffy, snowy, fresh breadcrumbs. And these are now ready to go into the oven. Slam it in there for 10 minutes because everything here is cooked. You just want to get a crust and a beautiful, very light brownish texture on top. We are on the last three dishes and the crab's baking in the oven. Just want to prep this for plating. This is just salt with water so I'll try to get rid of the unevenness and it'll just stay straight. This dinner is harder than I thought. 
They are filming, we are cooking, they are eating, I'm going to talk to them. Crew's talking to me, crew's getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. Here you go. Look at that beautiful baked crab. This dish, I've served it maybe once before at the restaurant and it's not available on our menus as of now. Baked crab with a Japanese twist. We are now on the eighth dish of the dinner, hamburgers. Hamburgers at Nihonbashi is relatively new, but to some it's been an item on the secret unpublished menu of Nihonbashi. This hamburger started with a simple barbecue with my daughter about five years ago, when we decided to make burgers. With her approval and many more from Ultra Foodies, this hamburger is now on the menu to be ordered with a 24-hour advance notice. This burger have baffled New Yorkers Germans who now endorse this as the best burger in the world. Maybe on season two, we'll make this hamburger. I always enjoy coming here to Nihonbashi and meeting Darshan and having and you know having the time of my life seeing what he presents to us. Um, and today was exceptional because he did a, a wonderfully light um, and tasty nine course menu for us. I've never had a nine course meal in my life before, so I didn't know what to expect, but uh, it just goes to show how creative and how talented he is as a chef and uh, how simple and yet so tasty his creations are. And I think that's the beauty about Japanese food for me, is how fresh the ingredients are, how simple it is. And when you have a chef like Darshan who presents it to you the way he does, it's uh, an unforgettable experience. Dobin Mushi. This soup is an autumn delicacy in Japan when matsutake mushrooms are in season. I serve this soup daily if and only we have fresh shiitake mushrooms. We use no artificial taste enhancers, just a very light, simple soup. Unlike continental cuisines where soups are served in the beginning, in Japanese food we serve soups at the end, signifying the end of the parade of plates and to fill any gaps if you have any. Mm got hooked up uh, with Japanese food when we were in Australia, I think in 2002 or three. And at that time we didn't know much about Nihonbashi obviously and uh, when we came back home we were looking for places we could have Japanese food. So then we found out Dajin has been fantastic. I think you know, every time we come here he makes sure that he gives one of his specialities. So we just, we just keep coming back. Absolutely, Japanese food, you know, lovers at the moment. So, and I think today is probably, I don't eat fish. I think today is the only time I've had fish, I think, since I was small. Yeah, I guess he's the, the ideal um, ambassador for, for food here in Sri Lanka to take what we have here abroad. Um, and uh, he brings to his food a lot of love and a lot of passion, which shines through even when he speaks to a customer. And I've been very fortunate to become his friend, but I've seen how he interacts with other customers as well. And, the love he has for his food just shines through. So I think that's very important. Um, and uh, for him to be on TV and to present it to Sri Lanka and hopefully abroad, uh, will showcase uh, what an excellent food culture we have here, what variety we have here. And um, for everyone to come and experience it in Nihon Bashi and at other restaurants around Sri Lanka. Every year, on the second Saturday of July or so, the Japanese community in Sri Lanka, together with the Japanese Embassy, celebrates a Japanese festival, the Bongodori. Held in the summer, everyone, including me, are in summer kimonos known as yukata. All contribute to creating a small Japan in terms of sights, sounds, flavors, and taste. Nihonbashi is privileged to have, over the years, contributed to make this event bigger and bigger and better. This TV program has been so much fun for me. We went to Japan, we went to Singapore, we went to so many little places in Sri Lanka. And there's a lot more journeys I have to show you. And I hope you join us in our journeys in the future. Aibo one, goodbye.
and sayonara!